Fabric, yeah, floristone lace. I wear fabrics, floristone lace, yes, and you look beautiful. You don't agree Canada, Shibuka, Shibuka. I 
Yeah, good afternoon, Daddy. Um, I would like to congratulate you. My name is Yabo Abagun, a former broadcaster with the Nigerian Television Authority, NT Channel 7. And I'm so glad to be with you this afternoon. Uh, in a couple of minutes, I just want to know you. We want to know you. This is, this is going to um, on social media. And we want to thank God for this special day, 21st day of July 2022. So who is... Are Abdul Razak Adekunle Etigo in a nutshell? Are means Adekunle Razak Etigo, deceased child of Alaji Shitu Etigo, and the fourth and last child of Alaji Alkayat Etigo. I was born on the 21st day of July, 1952, to the Etiko family. My father, Alaji Shitu Etiko, is from Lagos Island, uh, Broad Street, uh, Lion Court, Broad Street, Lagos, and Udo, Obalindi, Lagos. My mother, Alaji Arukayata in Kegsbo, is hailed from uh, Itakoni of the Atuba Jemu family. Though he also, she had she has uh, had a mother from Lauren Quara State, but the father was in the Russian. And so she was in the Russian too. I started my primary school education in January 1957 at Anzaldin School, Anzaldin Primary School, Ashalati, Jamaica. And I passed the G2 examination in December 1964. I was admitted to Anzaldin College, Solon. In January 1965, and left after successful uh, conduct of the West African examination, as a examination that time. I, I was in that school for five consecutive years, and while in that school, I was a member of Literary and Debating Society, Science Society, Muslim Student Association, as well as the Young Farmers Club. I happen to be the Vice President of Young, Farm Young Farmers Club in 1969. And in that year, we made an excursion to uh, Kenne, that was Mary Mayflower School, Kenne, which I led the member, no, <coughs> the members to, because the president was indisposed then. And uh, we were so we were we, we were we, we were received by the then principal and the proprietor of uh, Mayflower School then, Chief Taisho Lani. We engaged, we went there on a Friday, we were there on a Saturday, we were to engage with the students of Mayflower uh, Young Farmers Club chapter in some agricultural uh, uh, works. But on that day, there was a very heavy rain which debarred us from uh, doing what we were supposed to do. Anyway, the man took us around with his, uh, with his uh, Young Farmers Club of that school, went around the school on that Saturday. We saw a lot of things which the man did, 
many of those things that were being done, which we were exposed to, that time was that. They cultivated all the foods they are eating. They produce everything they were eating. Nine, as far back as 1969, it, it was there I saw a very fat pig. In fact, when I saw the pig, I, th I thought it was a big buffalo or a big uh, cow. So I was amazed. And so we couldn't do, but uh, unfortunately we couldn't help them. We couldn't share our agric knowledge, farmers, uh, farming knowledge. And we came back, back to our school at Azari College Award on Sunday. So that was one of uh, those things that uh, really uh, made me very happy to, to go to, to attend that school. And in 1969, we had our WASP, West African school, uh, school Certificate Exam. And I was happy to be in a very good grade. Daddy, I have I to cut was, you. Now, oh, yes, grade. thank you very much. Yes, you were talking about where you were born. How many of you? Are you the only child of your parents? I'm not the only child of my parents. Okay. My father uh, had uh, mom, uh, uh, many wives. My mother happened to be the first wife. Uh, my mother had uh, four children, which I'm the last of the four. The total number of our uh, Family, uh, the number of children my daddy had before his death, we were 15. We are 15 in number. But as we speak now, we are 11. We, we, uh, 11 of us are still living. Four of them, the four others have uh, died. Okay. So they are so rest, rest in peace. peace. Yes. And that of my disappearance. Okay. So, uh, my mother. I want you to talk about your education. Education, yeah. okay. Profession, the, profession. Yeah. <laughs> After the secondary school uh, education, I'd already lost my dad, who happens to be the breadwinner of the family, in, at the age of 10. So, I'd lost my dad even before I left the primary school. So the education, the secondary school education was taken care by the executor or administrator of my daddy's uh, properties, which were the forces of which were used in training us in the secondary school. And uh, <clears throat> when I uh, when I left Azadi College in Solo, I was to continue my education. But unfortunately, the limited resources could not go, go around easily like that. So I have to be re recluse or excused so that uh, other siblings may be taken care of. So as a result of this, I had no option than to take up a clerical job. I took a clerical job in October 1970 with Nigerian Post Authority and is as a key staff grade two. A clerk, a key staff grade two is a clerical uh, position. And uh, I, was, uh, I was employed as a key staff grade two in Nigerian Post Authority then. At this junction, I want to uh, say, may God rest the soul of Alaji H.P. Adebola the then one of the uh, very active uh, labor leaders who uh, actually helped to secure the job for me at Nigerian Post Authority then. I spent five years in Nigerian Post Authority. Those are the years we supposed to have been spent in uh, school, in higher school. But because of uh, paucity of fun, I have to work for five years. And while in Nigerian Post Authority, I was in transport uh, section, uh, both the import and export uh, uh, section of the, uh, of the 
of the of the authority of the workplace. I happen to work in so many sheds. I work in container seats. I work in exports. I work in, at the gate. I work as a timekeeper. And I, I, the, in between the, this period, I was reading for my advanced level. Uh, I was studying for my advanced level papers. And by the grace of God, I got the, I got the paper in 1974. In fact, I got the, the paper good in 1973, but I even forgot to apply to the university that time because working in Nigerian Post Authority then was like uh, uh, working in a treasure island because it's like you don't even ask for money before you are given, apart from your salary. The salary was so good, it's better than the ministry, and besides that, you are allowed to do over time. The overtime to when it's uh, converted to cash is even more than the salary. So the joy of having to uh, joy of having money then made me to even forgot to apply to university. But I didn't make that mistake in 1974. I, I, I applied to the university and I was admitted to the University of Ibadan, the premier citadel of academic excellence. That's the first university in Nigeria. What did you study? I was, I was admitted to study political science in the uh, uh, Faculty of Social Sciences. And uh, I was admitted in, July, uh, in September 1975 to graduate in 1978. I studied political science in the University of Nevada and uh, during that period, I was uh, I interacted a lot with a lot of friends, with many of uh, uh, colleagues, Lagosians, the many of us from Lagos and all that. And uh, I enjoyed the Lagos State Bus Street then. I had a lot of money with me, which I saved, uh, that uh, gave me some a lot, a lot of financial leverages. And my mother did a lot of wonders by supporting by supporting me, gave me a lot of money too, so I didn't have any problem in the university then. I was even like uh, somebody from uh, from a royal family, the way I spent uh, my life in the university. So there was hardly any challenges. I was a member of a political science student association. I was a member of the Muslim student association. I joined some uh, sports club, like team tennis club. I joined uh, a social club called Club de Capital. Club de Capital is whoever knows Universal but in those days. There used to be what we call Havana. <clears throat> Havana, Havana Night. So Havana Night and Club de Capital Night are rivals. So I, I was a member of Club de Capital. And Club de Capital is a well decent club. So that, in fact, when you mention it, uh, the, it's like uh, on, uh, contemporary of Havana then. It is this club that gave me the opportunity to meet the late Shikoba Femi Aulo. How did it happen? The club. I, I'm not an officer of the club, I'm I was just a member. The club had already scheduled a meeting with Chief of Afemi Aulo, Chief of Afemi Aulo, requesting him to come and deliver a lecture for the club. So the social club is not just a drinking club or something like that. It's a club that really goes into uh, uh, knowing uh, about national things, happenings, discourse, and all that. So the club requested Chief of Afemi Aulo to come and give the club members uh, a lecture. So in order to keep the message abreast of his promise, I was sent to go and meet him. Why do I have to go and meet him? 
the head of the diplomatic activities who supposed to go and meet the lessage was in this post. He was, uh, was not well that time. He happened to be my roommate. And uh, the, the emperor of the club, that's the head of the club, then mandated me. Since I was uh, happened to be his roommate, he mandated me to go and see the sage and remind him about the lecture he promised to give us. The name of the uh, head of the diplomatic activities who happened to be my roommate is Mr. Tunji Drews Mieti. Unfortunately, my brother is still kicking and well and uh, very alive, and you can say you can uh, add uh, more credence, credence to this. So I got there. I was able to see the lessage after about three hours waiting in his uh, office, in his uh, law firm to reception. And when the lessage called me to come up, I went to him. I prostrated because he, he was a father. He was a father to me. And he's a man that uh, he was an icon. Somebody who is so respected all over the world. And I was so opportune to have met such a dignity. And I got to him, I prostrated and said, Ah, my boy, what do you want from me? I said, Sir, I've come to see you. I was sent by my club, by the emperor of my club, to come and remind you of the lecture you, you promised to come and give us. He said, Okay, that's from University of Ghana. I said, Yes, sir. He said, Ah, okay, my boy. I won't be able to come and deliver the lecture. I said, why is that? He said, no, he won't be able to come. I said, you should have to come, sir, because you have already promised us. And when he was about to give the reason why he should not, he will not be able to come, he said, he took him, he always took him, he always took him six weeks to prepare a paper. And he had, he had several or such invitation from seven other uh, seven different universities. He started counting as my degree in Suka and all that. I said, ah, sir, all those universities are uh, younger brothers, sisters and all that, and uh, that is the uh, university of, uh, is the premier university. So you should try and forget about that and come to the battle and deliver the lecture because it's the first university, it's the only recognized university in Nigeria and the African, African countries. The man said, no, if he has to come to Ibadan, that is, if he has to come to Ibadan, he must have to go to others. And I should multiply, I should give the mass of, if it takes him six weeks to deliver a lecture and he has seven invitation card, I said, that's 42 weeks. He said, how many weeks do we have in a, in a year? I said, 52 weeks. He said, do, you, do I consider him as a human being, too? That he, he needs uh, time for his family, he needs time for his lover, he needs time for his uh, other businesses and all that. I said, yes, sir. But please, that of the battle is very, very uh, crucial. And it's key. He said, look, my boy, if I come to battle and I don't go to my Dukuri, or should I not go to Isuka? What will people say? I said tribalism. <laughs> he said it's not tribalism. He said it's ethnicism. I said, well, sir, I tried to convince the old sage. The man is not convinced. And he said, uh, look, he will not call. And one other reason, why is not talk? And before then, before I said, uh, before I said that, I said, sir, if it takes you six weeks to prepare a, le a lecture, and you have seven invitation cards, it is forty-two. It, it, why not put them together, such that the six weeks or twelve weeks can take to prepare the seven lectures? Instead of uh, th taking one, uh, one uh, it one by one, he said, "No, what he is saying in one place is 
quite different from what you will say in another place. So he needed, he needed, he needed that forty-two weeks to do that. So that's why he will not be able to come. And another reason he gave for his inability to come is that was that if he has to come, what he was he would uh, be willing to come and say about that is to uh, uh, to say uh, to talk about what they were planning for 1979 this thing what i'm saying happened uh, the my journey to his place happened in 1977 that what he come and say in, in, at the university of uh, if he uh, uh, agreed to come and give the lecture was about their preparation for the 1979 election. I said, yes, we are ready to uh, absorb, you are ready to listen. He said, no. Daddy, I have, not to, I have to cut it short here. Okay. I want to know, when did you become an accountant? Right. Just like okay. five minutes. When I, when I left uh, You're very good orator, I'm enjoying you. I graduated the University of Badon in July 1978. Uh, with the second class of our division. And uh, before I left, I'd already made up my mind that I wanted to go for another course that would give me, that would be more challenging than computer science. Because I'd already made up my mind that uh, I would not want to go into politics. So when I left, I went, I got a job with Deloitte Askins and Sales. Yes. With Deloitte Askins and Sales. Deloitte Askins and Sales uh, is a, a firm of charter, a reputable firm of charter accountant, international charter accountant, internationally recognized charter accountant. Can you imagine how good those days were? I only walked into Forty Marina, where the office was, then. And I met uh, one of their partners, no, one of their top managers. I introduced myself to him and I told him that I, I had of uh, Deloitte Askins and Sales and I want to work with them. He said, okay. That was on a Friday. He said, come back on Monday. The staff partner was not around. Uh, that if on Monday I come back, the staff partner will see, but he had already taken my name and then everything. The Monday I got there, I saw the supper that PJ, PJ Mida. Mida said, are you ready to work with, with us? We don't take any anybody less than first class or second class of her. I said, I'm happy. I was in second class of her. I said, yeah, you are employed. <laughs> then you can start whenever you want to start after your new service. So I got the job even before I went for new service. Wow. So my new service was at Calabar. I went for new service in uh, the July, uh, August 1978, around September or August 1978, and I finished in uh, 19, 1979. Uh, at, uh, I, I was posted to uh, Calabar, Calabar Municipal Council. I was posted to Calabar Municipal Council as an administrative officer. So I was there for one year, and after that one year, I was uh, uh, certified as the NYC and I left Calabar uh, for Lagos, my, my stay, my base. And uh, a, a month after, I started the work, because each, each time I was in Calabar, PJ Media, the staff partner of uh, Deloitte Askins and Sales, then, which is now Deloitte, Akintola Williams. Uh, we were chatting, we were talking most of the time, and he said he would be expecting me. I resumed in, Nigeria, in Deloitte Aspins and Sales in, uh, in August 19, I think August or September 1979. And uh, I started uh, as an article clerk. Then I now register for the institute exam. That is the Institute of Shattered Accountants of Nigeria. I did my first exam 
foundation exam on, in uh, November 1980, which coincided with the time I got married too, which also coincided with the time we had our first child. And fortunately, as God will have it, I passed the first examination at the go, and uh, even without uh, knowledge of accounting. So that was very, I mean, uh, uh, the staff partner, Alaji uh, Aditono, Rashid Aditono, then, was very amazed. So he, he sent for me. At that time, I had already went out to go and enjoy myself. When the partners met and they are meeting the, the staff of the dealer then to congratulate some of us that passed, especially at the group, I was away. I was. I got the congratulation on essential and on the Monday. It was a, always a Friday. I can examination exam. A result always come out on Fridays. So what? Once I got my result and I passed, I just started uh, getting myself entertained with some of my friends. So it was the following Monday that uh, I got the uh, shout, the loud noise that uh, I was so praised and all that. Then uh, after uh, some while, I did my other exams too, and uh, I, quali uh, I, I, quali I became a qualified accountant. And also uh, a fellow 19... chartered accountant as well. Uh, yeah, uh, 1985, May 1985, and I was fellowized as SCA in 1996. But before qualifying, uh, before find, uh, qualifying as a shadow accountant, I didn't qualify in Deloitte Askins and Sales. I left Deloitte Askins and Sales in 1983, and I was, uh, I, I got, I got, a, uh, I got a job with, uh, I was employed by BP African Petroleum Limited in November 1st, 1983, as an assistant internal editor. Because I have not had passed my final exam, I have still had the, uh, had the level to go. Then in May 1985, in May 1985, in May 1985, I qualified as a chartered accountant and uh, ACA, and I was salarized as SCA in 1996. I was in African Petroleum. I moved from finance and accounts uh, and internal audit on many occasions as assistant internal auditor, as cost accountant, as coordinator accountant, as uh, senior internal auditor, as manager financial services, finally as chief internal auditor. And I voluntarily resigned my appointment on the 8th of March. 2002. It was a voluntary, voluntary uh, uh, resignation, uh, resignation retirement, because there were some packages then which some of us took advantage of. I have not reached the age of retirement before I retired. I retired voluntarily at the age of 50. And since then, I've been on my own. Okay. Yeah, what, have, to, what have you been doing? What do you do now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or oh, have uh, you retired? <laughs> like. I'm still on. I'm still on. Okay, so. I'm, I'm retired but not tired. And uh, uh, I happen to be the chairman of PNL Consult Limited, the president of uh, Vector Ventures Limited. And uh, uh, this company's Majorly is uh, going to investment. We do a lot of investment in stock and shares. We do other things. We do consultancy. We, uh, I do. I have a license to practice as a chartered accountant, but for some time I withdrew uh, uh, from looking at figures because perhaps I think it's affecting my. Sites or things like that. And most, mostly at times, some of those clients find it difficult to, <laughs> to pay. Or Thank you, Daddy. We can go on and on. Yeah. You're a very intelligent man. I'm surprised. Yeah. 
We've done 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes, and we're here to talk about your social life. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. told us. I'm a member the of the club. Okay. I'm okay. a member of the uh, Eco Club. I'm a member of the Liberty Social Club. Our president of the Liberty has just left. That's Ibalu who was dancing with us that time. Okay. And uh, I'm a member of the BOT, Board of Trustee of the Liberty Social Club. So yeah. I write a lot on the on national discourse. On I belong to various platforms, and uh, we engage in political issues, economic issues, Nigerian situation, world uh, political order, world order, uh, American election, and all those. Uh, areas yeah, you told. Of thank you very much, sir. You told us about the year you met your wife. But yeah. how did you propose to her? I met. How how did you meet her? Okay. Was it through a friend? That's right. That's very <laughs> interesting. You see, it was uh, just by chance or luck, and it was just when things when there was nothing like a uh, very effective phony phone, uh, phone system. I was in University of Badam in 1978. While I was writing my dissertation, my sister visited me. My sister, the, uh, the elder one, was there at this moment. He visited me. Can you imagine visiting somebody? He, he was, uh, she, she was uh, schooling in Nabe with a reference Kuti. Memorial, Memorial school. school. With my wife. Then he said, according to them, she told them, she told her friends that she had a brother in Vassal Ibadan. That one of these days, let's just go to Ibadan. Let's go for, leave school for, uh, on our open day. Uh, and I will uh, go to Ibadan. Luckily, my wife, too, her parents were living in Ibadan. Okay, all are there. So they came to the university. There was no advance notice. No phone call, nothing. I was just told that uh, that uh, that time things were not that. I don't know how Nigeria just became the way it is now. So that when the vendor put his paper there on the floor, you will read and pay. If you want to carry it, the money will be there. And if you don't want to carry it, you read and uh, leave his paper there. It's not like now. So my sister and, and my prospective wife is my wife now <coughs> came came to visit came to visit me came to visit me in I was busy I was busy I was not even having any time for any person because my my supervisor was on me that I should finish my dissertation on time and that time again. That was Alimos Go era. So I was battling, writing paper and uh, joining Alimos Go people because if you don't join, you, have to, you just have to join in uh, student politics. Otherwise, you are risking your life. So I, understand, I learned that some, some people came uh, coming, uh, uh, asking for me. Three girls. <laughs> 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 Luckily, that time, I was in one special room. In our final year, they always give us special room. We call it Dior. Uh, Dior. It's only two of us that are there. It's as big as from here to the beginning of that time, the table. And it will be shared for two people with some privacy. So when they came, I was wondering, Titi, how did you make it? I didn't know, he said, he just say, let me come and see. Because he knew that by the time he gets to University of Badon, he has after me, they will see me, they will find me. And luckily I was found. <laughs> and uh, they brought them to our room, and we started chatting. I took them for lunch in our laboratory, in our cafeteria. I gave them some drinks and all that. Then the other two ladies, I just saw, uh, I like this one, though. so 
Did you talk to her directly or was... I, I talked to her directly. What happened was that... What, what was the first thing you told her? What I told her... Will you before, be my wife or I like you? Is... You know, you, you can imagine a situation where they were going back to school. Please open and put the water. Thank you. Why the three of them were going back to school. And I just draw her. I draw her hand. I said, ah, look, I like you. You are a fine lady, you are a fine girl and all that. He said... Uh, what, was the, what was that reaction? The reaction was not... Uh, all was that it positive. friendly? It was friendly. But Daddy, you can take your water. Thank take you, some water. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The reaction was friendly, but not positive. So friendly, but not positive. Okay. It didn't give me a yes a, or no. No. Okay. What did she no. say? <laughs> Can you still remember, I sir? I can't vividly remember. Remember, yeah, but because it's been it didn't long. Say how how long ago was that? Like over forty-two that, that, years. Forty-two. Uh, forty-four years. Seventy-eight. Wow. Nineteen seventy-eight. Wow. So I saw them to the park, gave them some money to get back to their school, and uh, they, they, they left. Without my knowledge, I didn't know my sister had already busy trying to convince her. Convince her, <laughs> talk to her and all that. Then I returned the visit. That okay. time I had already submitted my dissertation, waiting for the final approval and all that. Then I returned the visit and went to, to their school. I saw that. I didn't tell them the, 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 like they didn't tell me when they were coming. <laughs> I didn't tell them. Too. So I saw them uh, just like that. So when I got there, I called them. I called her. I started talking to her. And my, it was that time my sister was trying to do some additional work on, on that. So I call her, I talk to her, I said so many things and how I intended to marry him, marry her, marry her. and uh, how I love her and all that. Was she I convinced? Was immediately? Or, she was. Or she, she said, ah, I let, said let me a lot think. of things. That time, you know, a student with uh, all this grammar and all that, <laughs> it was so fresh in us, and uh, the, lady, the girl was just looking, me, looking at me like that, as if <laughs> I just come to talk. <laughs> when I finish talking, I, I can go, go my way. Mm. But it wasn't, it didn't go like that. Mm. Uh, because what happened then was that there was a heavy rain, very heavy rain, which Beyond, is beyond description. So that I could not go back to my camp, University of Badon, on that day. Even it's not uh, advisable that I should take a taxi or go back. Or, so they were able to arrange with uh, some people that also arrange with uh, us master. That somebody, maybe they tell say a brother of person came and uh, we could not go back and he has to go back to Vasa because of this and that and all that. So they arranged a place for me to sleep to the following day. The following day I slept. And those are the period that uh, letter writing may not may not get to where it's going, it's going. until I'm after sorry. about three, four weeks or so one is not even interested in writing letters or something like that. I left the university preparing to go for youth service. Then I came home. I later learned that is uh, whenever I comes, she comes on holiday. Okay. I always stay with the hand at 14 Jalik Mall. Close. Close. Ruler. Over there. <laughs> so it happens to be the time my senior brother too came from Europe and uh, he was living a sort of lavish life. There was a lot of uh, the place he was working with was giving 
two vehicles, two drivers and all that. So in the process, whenever I face his own, I will take that the second driver to come and meet uh, Jalupo and uh, we talk. And it was then things were getting to uh, getting good between two of us. So, Your courtship, Daddy, I want to cut you short because yeah. of time. Your courtship was for how long? Then uh, only two years. Ah, that it was only two years. Yeah, seventy-eight to eighty. Wow. So in nineteen eighty, just that's, to show, that's so long. Just to show. <coughs> water. Do you want more water, sir? No, it's okay. You're fine. Okay. How friendly and lovely the whole uh, uh, thing is. The the intimacy and the friendship. How lovely it is. And the relationship so, is blessed with is, children, is blessed with children and grandchildren, sir. Grandchildren. So what has kept you two together? Advice oh, to the young ones. I think yes. it's understanding. I think it's patience. I think it's endurance. You see, it's, I can't tell you, I cannot lie to you that you don't quarrel. We quarrel. In fact, we quarrel a lot, but at the end of the day, we Made God up always uh, help us to straighten things. Our first quarrel, <coughs> excuse me, took the intervention of his of a late dad. The late dad, I may God continue to bless his soul. So. He said, "Whatever quarrel you have with your husband, go and settle it." You have no place in my house again. <laughs> so, when the mother was cracking and trying to uh, be annoying, the father was just a uh, pastor. He said, Go back to where you are coming from. That's your place. You don't have any place here again. So, since that day, I gave my very utmost respect and my. Uh, my humility, um, top humility to that, to that Baba, and I always pray for him. So, since then, they've been trying to uh, settle any differences between us. So, that how long have you been married? How long have you two been married? That's what I said, 42 years ago, 19th, November 15, 19th. We got married in November 15, 1980. Now, Daddy, what's your favorite food? Congratulations. What's your favorite, My favorite food? My food, apart from Amalai Wedo and fresh fish, is Chinese. <laughs> because if I'm in a party, what I always ask for now is Chinese. What about but if your... the Chinese is not available, I will take Amalai and eat it without begging. What about your favorite song? Do you have any favorite song? Yes. Like those days. I'm talking about those days, when you were in to school. Be frank, yes. Those days. And my favorite song is uh, King Sonia Day and Ayla Maura. Can you remember including, the track? Including, they... including uh, uh, what was this band's name? Uh, Barista. Alaji Agba. Late Alaji Agba. Late Alaji Agba. You see, the man is so gifted. Uh, I mean, uh, Alaji Abba. Alaji Abba is so gifted. Alaji Abba is a barista. There are certain songs he, uh, he, he, he sang in those days that really. Can you remember the song? Yeah, okay? I'm trying to think of many of them now. <laughs> but. Uh, Thank you very much, sir. What about the Ayla? Ayla Maura? Yeah. It's also. 
Okay, Daddy, don't worry. <laughs> I, I can see, Daddy, that you've talked so much intelligently. At 70, you're blessed, Daddy. You uh, may God uh, keep you long, give you long life and the very best of health. So what's been the secret to good health? Why are you so strong? I remember that time you were dancing Buga. Hey, I said, see, see daddy, our own daddy. Oh my God. So what's the secret? Is there any special food? Any, yes. Are you on any special diet? Not special as such. I eat a lot of foods. Fruits? I don't take breakfast without taking fruits first. And I don't take fruits before uh, without taking water first. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing is to take almost one liter or one half liters of water. After that, that is after praying. Then after that, I take some time, like one hour. Then I eat food, different types of food: banana, orange, uh, apple, banana, apple, uh, purple, watermelon. At times, I have a dish of it. I eat it like food at times. So after that, I go for normal. My breakfast at times may not be breakfast. It could be brunch. Or at times it could be late. But my best breakfast is fruits. I take fruits a lot. And uh, the breakfast, after breakfast, I only go for lunch. Then, Dinner, do you play any sports? Do you are you into yes, sports like do, that? I used to play the tennis very well in those days, but uh, now I, I have not been playing for some time. I've not been playing. I read, I read, I write, and uh, I listen to music, and I walk. The exercise. The I like. Okay. That was your favorite color. White. <laughs> why? 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 White. I was made to like white by my eldest brother, the head of our family. Unfortunately, he couldn't come today because of it. When the man came from Europe, he always wear white shirt. When he wears white shirt under. A suit, and that blue of that suit. Oh. You will see the hundred percent cutting in that uh, white shirt. Then I asked the man, "Why do you so like white shirt?" He said, "Why is white is your best color?" I said, "Why is it the best color?" He said, "It has been said that you come to life with white, and you go back to where." Back to the heaven or back to God with white. Since that time, I <laughs> love so white. I, I love white, and my wardrobe is about 80% white. Wow. So, at any point in time, I always wear white. And sometimes in 2001, one of our sheikhs in uh, Azarbin Society of Nigeria, who are, uh, is late now, Laji Bati. Uh, of Ansaruddin Society. 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 A yeah, yeah. <laughs> He gave us an admonition sometimes ago that people should try and be wearing white to Asalatu. That the white should not necessarily have to be uh, lace. It does not necessarily have to be very costly one. It could be just a cotton white, or ordinary white. You can have as many as four. And when you start washing them and all that, you be replacing them. People will not uh, know you go have more than He advised everybody to be wearing white then. And that also uh, added more. Uh, to the uh, wearing to, to my love uh, to, to 
submit with no uh, white demand. Thank you very much, sir. Um, yes, um, in rounding up, I, I want you to tell us, are you fulfilled at 70? By the grace of God, I think I, I am. You see, fulfillment may be a corollary for uh, contentment. If one is contented, I don't need to have a lot of money to, to get food. I don't need to have a lot of assets to get food. But once I have the contentment, once I'm, I'm, I'm contented, I think I'm fulfilled. And why am I fulfilled? It's because that I have given a total submission to the will of the Almighty Allah. And when you do this, you will have fulfillment. You will have contentment. I read Quran uh, always. I'm saying always because I read it for almost at times for a period of about nine months in a year. I have to take a break. I always like to read the Quran when it's uh, about uh, three months or four months after the conclusion of one Ramadan. We concluded one Ramadan around the May. And I'm going to start my Quran again. Though I've been reading uh, just like that, but the written the real recitation that is completing Quran, completing more, completing I always like to complete uh, Quran after one one Ramadan, after the completion of Ramadan and the start of another one, I always want to read ten Quran chapters, not ten chapters, the whole Quran ten times. Wow. Okay, for reading all over again, all over again. Yes, for that period, I started this since 2011, and I've not ceased to read. It. I promised God to read it. Though I'm not yet an Afa, I'm not near, I'm still a learner. Though I have fluency in it, I promise the Almighty Allah I will read Quran. I will read Quran. I will read Quran. I will start reading Quran from 2011 and I will be reading 10 10. Because I promised God I will read it 100 times and I have fulfilled that. That's 300 it. times? 100 times. 100 times in a year? No, in that 10 years. 10 in a year. Oh, okay. 10 in a year okay. from 2011 to 2021. And you have not failed? I have not failed. I have finished it. I have kept my promise with Almighty Allah that I will read 100 and I have read it. Though all the translation, I'm yet to go to school for that. But the fluency and the pronunciation Allah. of the Quran is almost perfect. So when I finished the 100 last year, I thought uh, I should stop. Then something in my mind said I should not stop. So I've read the one that completed another 10 from last year till uh, the conclusion of Ramadan in May this year. So I'm starting another one in September 1st and continuously like that until I start the trans translation. Thank you very much, Daddy. That is the cause of my fulfillment. <laughs> thank and you, I'm thank contented. you, Daddy. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know what to say. We actually planned this interview for 30 minutes and it's almost. 60 minutes. Thank you very, very, Thank much. You very much. Happy birthday it. to you. Thank you. I wish you many more fruitful years Amen. in good health, Inshallah.
God bless you. God bless you. And we'll see you on Sunday. My, my God 31st. That is when we're going to party. Yeah. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. 